Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs and today it's about de-yellowing yellowed plastics and I'll show you an example from my youth, a shortwave radio from an um, electronics experimental kit and you can see that the consoles have seriously, well not seriously, but they have visibly uh, yellowed and there was also an example in one of my latest videos with a Braun Electron AM radio kit and today I'll show you an example how to de-yellow yellowed plastics. Now the reason for the yellowing is a UV light and the chemistry behind it or the physics behind it is not quite clear. One suspect is bromine which is used in, is or was used in plastics as fire retardant and it is kind of embedded in the plastics and invisible but as soon as a certain amount of UV radiation gets onto the surface of the plastic then the bromine is set free and if you know bromine it's orange brown depending on the concentration and it seriously looks like the yellow orange of the yellowed plastic. So and as an appetizer I'll show you what I've achieved with the front panel of the Braun Electron radio with the de-yellowing and I'll show you a picture before and after de-yellowing and it's not 100% but I would say sufficiently uh, de-yellowed and this was my first attempt and I'll tell you how it works. Now the procedure is called Retrobrite and was discovered more or less by chance in a German forum for retro computers and you need three ingredients. The first one is hydrogen peroxide which you get well either in a liquid uh, form or you also can get it as you can see here in a kind of cream or gel. You get it in concentrations up to 12% at least in Germany that's the maximum allowed concentration and I got a 5 liter canister with a 12% liquid hydrogen peroxide solution and as you can see this one here is also 12% concentration. The advantage of the cream is that you can apply it with a brush onto the surface of your yellowed plastic so you don't need many liters and a vessel where to soak the plastic into but you have to apply it very evenly and then uh, it is recommended to encase it in a transparent plastic bag. Now that's the first ingredient a source of hydrogen peroxide. There are also other chemicals that set free hydrogen peroxide. One of them is sodium percarbonate and the other is sodium perborate. Uh, these are found in most of the cleaners that begin with oxy like oxy vanish or oxy clean or however they are called. But there is uh, one trick they only set free hydrogen peroxide if they get either warmed up to a temperature above 40 degrees celsius or even above 60 degrees celsius or you apply an activator or a starter and that's the second ingredient that is recommended and this is a chemical that is abbreviated as TAED and it's difficult to pronounce this correctly for me as a German it's tetraacetyl ethylene diamine or diamine. So this chemical helps to set free hydrogen peroxide from chemicals like the set sodium perborate or sodium percarbonate. And I'm not sure why this chemical is necessary if you use pure hydrogen peroxide anyway but uh, let's stick to the formula from the retro bright people who developed this method. Anyway the question is where to find this TAED and if you search for it for example in eBay you've, you can find it as ingredient to for example denture cleaners like uh, this one here you get for less than a euro in drugstores. 
and just search for it. Either you search for the abbreviation TAED or uh, for the complete name tetraacetylethylenediamine or however it is pronounced. So this is the second ingredient and the third is UV light. Now you might say, well, you UV light was responsible for yellowing the plastic, so how can it help in de-yellowing the plastic? Now there's another reaction um, between hydrogen peroxide and UV light, and you can see this here. What is set free is the hydroxyl radical, and this is much more active or reactive than hydrogen peroxide in itself. Although according to the Wikipedia entry, uh, people have successfully de-yellowed plastic also without UV light, only under fl fluorescent light. Well, fluorescent lighting also emits ultraviolet radiation. So it's best just to have all three ingredients, a source of hydrogen peroxide, TAED, and a source of UV light. Of course, the simplest source of ultraviolet radiation is the sun, but depending on where you live and which season we have and how much cloud cover we, ha we have, here in Germany it's quite a problem. Uh, you have to wait until midsummer and then catch a day without any clouds and you have, you have to have the time. So there are also UV lights available for buying, which are also sometimes called black light tubes. So try it for yourself and I was quite content uh, with, the, with the outcome of my first attempt. And what is still missing is, of course, the lettering. Buy yourself decals. If you ever have done some model kit building, in your youth, you you know how this works. Uh, you have to put them in lukewarm water, and then you can um, separate them from the underlying paper and shift them onto onto your plastic, and you will have perfect uh, lettering again onto your onto your panel. And I've uh, I've used these which are for uh, laser printers and transparent. They come in all forms and shapes for color inkjets. I would not recommend color inkjet because then you have to protect them again with a with a spray uh, to seal them against humidity and it's much simpler with a laser printer. So that was it for my venture into de-yellowing plastics and thanks for watching. Until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanker Labs.